What is up from the Dene has arrived to Pokemon Go, so let's try it out, see if it's good. I have a lot of awesome battles in store for you today, but first, let's talk about it. First off, this thing is really freaking cute. Let's just take a quick second to appreciate it's amazing face. The Dene has a very interesting electric fairy typing, which gives it some very interesting coverage uh, in the Great League because of this typing and stats and moves during Thunder Shock, Discharge, Flare Off. Uh, by the way, it's able to beat uh, common fighting types like Metacham and Scrafty, uh, dark types like Mandibus, Sableye, Umbrian, water types like Azumarill and Jellicent, and flying types like Skarmory and Talonflame, amongst others so overall really really good coverage also has some big losses though against some key meta players like stunfisk and all the other ground types like diggersby uh, swampert wishcash it really struggles against nidoqueen is a big issue besides that grass types are a big issue venusaur ferrothorn abomas snow all can cause a lot of trouble I found it quite difficult to find good partners for the Dene to cover all its weaknesses. However, there are definitely some Pokemon that do a good enough job like Scrafty, Umbrian, Sableye, Venusaur, Trevenant and Lickitung amongst some others. As far as IV goes, it is quite simple. There really aren't any breakpoints you're gonna hit with Thundershock. So you want a low, low attack, high ranked one, preferably with high defense as there are some pretty cool Hook points you can hit with the Dene, particularly for against the Yoxis, where if you have a defensive stat of over 109.5, you'll hit a bulk point against most Deoxys and you'll be able to beat it in the zero shields. Though, if you want to guarantee that bulk point, you're going to have to go up all the way to 111.55 uh, defense for just in case you face like a 15 attack Deoxys, which I wouldn't expect. So, like 109.5. 210 is probably enough for that however there's also another bulk point for alolan nine tails where if you have a defense stat of at least 110.5 which is really high you'll reach a charm bulk point against like some alolan nine tails if you want to guarantee it you can't if they have high high enough attack they'll always reach it However, the higher the defense you have, the higher the chance you have of reaching that bulk point. So I would highly recommend getting it a Dene of around 111 to 112 defense if possible. Those will serve you very well, especially in the Deoxys and the Lola Ninetales matchups. Anyway, enough talking, let's head into these battles. I have three different teams to show to you today. These battles were done against members of my Discord, so shout outs to them. Especially Scali, Rag, Shirak, and Jardinho for doing these battles uh, with me. Anyway, first team I'll be using the Dene, Trevenant, Sableye, Fairy, Double Ghost. You know I love it. Uh, and it works just the same as usually. The Dene is my dark answer. If I don't see a dark in the lead, ideally you'd switch to Sableye, lure it out. Uh, then you just let Sableye go down, usually with burning a shield, because Sableye is an absolute freaking monster. Uh, you take out the dark with the Dene, and then hopefully Trevenant can sweep. Just a simple ABB line. Let's see if it works. First game, we have one of the worst possible leads. A bonus note beats both the Dene and Trevenant, and it's also not too bad for the Sableye. It's going to get off a weather ball right here, and that will definitely hurt uh, my Sableye. However, if I can get a, a sheer advantage with my Sableye or using my Sableye, uh, the Dene uh, might be able to play rough in the end or Trevon will be able to share ball to take it out. So that's the plan right there. Hopefully I can take a shield from this opposing Sableye. Looks like I will be able to. I'm guessing they, they're gonna wanna keep switch advantage. They're, they're gonna farm me, uh, farm me down though, which is not ideal. Return would really hurt uh, my the Dene. So I'm gonna shield it. Even if it's a foul play, I'd rather not take two foul plays anyway. And since I threw a foul play now, I know this is also just a foul play. So I don't have to shield it. I have a good energy advantage now. The bomb is energy dry because they threw immediately. So I should be able to get the two player roughs before they get the two more weather balls. So that's quite nice. Player roughs should really hurt this thing right here. Gonna go for a play rough uh, right now. They actually let it go and it does so much damage. We ended up CMP tying though, so I'm definitely going to shield this up. I'm expecting a water type in the back, as is commonly paired with a Bomber Snow. Maybe Azumarill, maybe Jellicent. Either one would be fine with me. Azumarill a little better though, because Jellicent, I think, will be able to farm me down and then Shadow Ball my Trev. Whereas Azu, as you can see right here, even if it, even if it has Ice Beam, I don't think it does enough. One Discharge coming through. As you could see, 
does good damage. Discharge is not really a strong move, but it's still able to two-shot Azumaro. So that's quite nice. They shoot out the second one though at this point, which is bringing the tree. And this should be game over right there. Even if they have, even if they have Ice Beam, that doesn't knock out. It's just a player off though. Just neutral doesn't do much. Uh, and now we're just going to go for the Seed Bomb. And this should take out the Azumar or almost take it out. That's a GG right there in the first game. The Dene into Trevenant. Another terrible lead actually. Because, well, Trevenant uh, resists, of course, the Thunder Shocks. And it paces you to the big move. Uh, so not amazing. I'm bringing my Sable. I hopefully to, again, hopefully get, getting a shield advantage here. So maybe my Trevon can sweep in the back. That's the idea. Here comes Licky Tongue. And Sable I can actually win the zero shields here with the energy advantage I have. So no need to shield. If I shield right there, I'm, we're going to go even shields. Where if I no shield this, I'm guaranteed to get switch or a shield advantage here. So either way, I'm getting an advantage. And they already shield right there. This is actually really nice for me. I'm going to hopefully be able to farm up. Uh, with the Dene versus the Licky Tongue, so I can maybe get a play rough off on the Trevenant. That'd be quite nice. I throw a Body Slam right here, and I think they're like four Thunder Shocks away from a next Body Slam, which means no, only only like two actually, like four turns, which is not uh, great for me. I will shoot this up. I want to keep my Dene kind of healthy. Gonna throw six Thunder Shocks. That's right before they get to the next Body Slam and catch it on my Trevenant. To keep all that energy, throwing a discharge at that spot at that point felt kind of wasteful. So instead, I'm gonna try to farm it down with uh, Trevenant. Unfortunately, I have a Scrafty in the back, which is a pretty hard answer to the tree. Unfortunately, however, if I can get off three seed bombs right there, that should be able to knock out the Scrafty. Shield this up. I think I might be able to get to two more seed bombs before the next foul play, but I end up making a misplay right here. I throw a seed bomb when I have two, and you really shouldn't do that. You should always throw one before because what's going to happen here right now is we actually see him be tied and i will die with the seat bomb if i threw one before my double seat bomb i would have had a chance of denying their counter all right it shouldn't happen but it sometimes does happen that you deny their counter and if i did i would be able to get to another a seat bomb right there and see him be tied on that one in this case i would wasn't able to unfortunately i do get to the play rough versus this Tree though, and it does so much damage, but unfortunately, it doesn't knock out, and it's a game over right there. Very close, though, all things considered, because it was kind of hard countered. The Dene lead into Galarian Stunfist. This is what you hate to see again. We're just gonna pivot into Sableye all right here. Oh, I actually haven't had any good leads with this team so far. It's kind of crazy. And the Dene does have some very common answers, unfortunately. Luckily, uh, this I think this backline does a pretty good job at covering uh, for it and giving me a shot to at least win some games. A sheer nerf back right here, which is really, really, really nice right there. Gonna foul play here on the CMP tights. Eight mud shots and then seven for Earthquake. So I threw out the seven mud shot uh, right there. Do CMP time. Gonna no shield this. Expecting the Earthquake, but I don't wanna shield the Earthquake. I think it's pretty obvious at this point. They're pretty weak to Ghost in the back. Which means Trevenant might be able to sweep. At least that's what I'm hoping. They bring in a Mew. And at this point, I'm very sure they're weak to Ghost in the back. They were really hoping they'd be able to, able to farm me down there with the Mew. Uh, but luckily, I was still able to get to the foul play. Burner shield. We get some go battle. A lag right here. Unfortunately, the game today wasn't uh, the best. I think there's still this maintenance thing going on for the next couple days. Uh, so I think we might have had some lag from that. Anyway, gonna no shields these serves. I can take them. Luckily, Dene, it's not that squishy. It's not tanky at all, but luckily it's it's tanky enough to take those serves. Anyway, bring in Trev right there. And yes, they were incredibly weak uh, to Ghost. Uh, as you could see, this was a, a Stunfist double Psychic line. I like it. I like it. And my back line likes it too. We Shadow Ball this. Almost knocks. I'm going to shoot this up. This is the hardest hitting move at this point. So no reason not to shield. Uh, but yeah, it's just over. I go for the Sid Boom right here. Just to take out the Stunfisk. Make it quick. Uh, and then we farm down the Cresselia. And it's a GG right there. Venusaur lead, another another bad lead, and we go into Sableye. Uh, this is this is not great uh, because well, Venusaur does outp outpace us to the moves now, and they will kill. And well, we also get some big lag here. Like I said, the go battle lag is real. I was I was only one Shadow Claw behind, so I don't know how they got here. 
uh, three Shadow Claws before I hit my next one. I think uh, I definitely missed out from on some Shadow Claws there in Forge here, and I'm gonna have to go two shields down, which really, really stinks. They bring in their Stun Fisk as well, which is, well, not great. Already two, <laughs> two answers for Day Dene, unfortunately. But yeah, this is a very common pairing, and this is why I think that Day Dene in the open Great League might not be the best choice, because there are definitely teams out there which just double or triple counter you, like this Stunfisk Venusaur core, which is pretty common, right? So I think it's a tough, tough Pokemon uh, to run in Open Great League, but in, like, limited metas, I think it will be amazing, because it's just an amazing, uh, unique, like, Pokemon with really cool coverage. Uh, so definitely we'll see a lot of play in limited metas, uh, but in Open Great League, I think maybe not the best. I'm really hoping they shield this Seed Bomb here so I can Shadow Ball afterwards and kill them. Fortunately, they no shield. And at this point, I think uh, this is just game over. They still have the Venusaur left. But let's just see how far we can get. Tree goes for another one. I was reopening. They throw the foul play right there into my Dedene. Unfortunately, they didn't. They switch it to their Venusaur now. I throw the play rough, hoping they no shield. But unfortunately, they do end up shielding. This wouldn't do that much though, so... I don't think it uh, would have mattered that shoot or not. I was hoping it no shoot, and then I'd farm down with Trev, but nah, there's no way. They sludge, I die, uh, and then Trev comes in. But they already had another frenzy, and that does kill the tree. Good game right there. All right, next line also sort of functions as an ABB. We have our anti-steel Scrafty in the lead, and if we don't see a steel type, we'll switch to Skarmory, because it still has a lot of play versus the common steel types, like... Stunfisk and Reggie Steel. Uh, Bastidon, you really don't want to see though, but in that case, you just let your Skarm go down and you can farm it down. It's crafty, still kind of fine. And then the Dene in the back, once the Steel type is gone or Ground type, uh, hopefully you can sweep. That's why they kind of like an ABB. Uh, you know, Scrafty, of course, not the best answer versus poison types like Venusaur and Nidoqueen. However, it does do a lot of work and you can usually burn a shield with it so it's not terrible anyway let's just head into this first game this is a decent lead crafty versus swampert shadow swampert uh at that even um and this is already a counter for the dene right there's a counter for the dene so we get it out of the way with our crafty uh which is cool i'm just gonna go for a pup even if they no shield this it's fine uh, I will be. Able, I will need to burn a shield on this next Hydro, but that's okay. I have a powered up Scrafty now, which is quite powerful versus basically everything besides maybe a Charmer. But Altaria comes in, and I'm actually gonna throw a Foul Play right there. But this is really nice for the Dene, because the Dene, of course, with his Fairy typing and Play Rough, does really, really well in this matchup. Well, I say really, really well. You still need to hit two Play Roughs to kill it, or in this case, the Foul Play plus the Play Rough. And as you can see, these sky attacks really do add up. And if you get uh, let uh, Altaria build up to a Moonblast, it does a good chunk as well. Actually, the Dene uh, can lose the two shields. And I think also the one shield uh, if he goes straight play rough versus Altaria. And they bait with sky attack and then hit the Moonblast. So it's not the best matchup. But in general, I would say it is in favor of the Dene. Anyway, Swampert comes back in. Uh, I'm kind of expecting since his shield the Discharge another flyer in the back as is very common with uh, swampert right the skarmory they do bring it in right there i get to my discharge and this does, does a good chunk to skarmory i'm just gonna go ahead and burn another shield off this thing this will kill it or burn the shield likely burn the shield and then uh, after i do that i just go skarm and at this point this is game over there's no way the skarm uh, gets me low enough or kills me and, and the swampert won't get to a move before i slash it down so we are looking pretty good right here's gonna brave bird this for no reason at all sky attack would have knocked out honestly this is a stupid play because let's say i miscounted their swampert and they had a hydro right here i would have died uh so but anyway it worked out so gg <laughs> scrafty into stunfisk a really good lead for my scraft he comes say by not bad i make a bit of a slow swap into the Dene, and this is now pretty scary. I just go straight for the play rough. Thing is, though, with the energy advantage, this Sableye has if they shoot this up and they bait me, they can get definitely get to the return before my next play rough. So I'm actually gonna call the foul play right here, but it's a return and we die. Yes, nice, nice, the Dene showcase, right? <laughs> oh, if I shoot at that though, I would have been in a really good spot. So 
it is a kind of a 50 50 call at that point uh, and well done by my opponent by making the right call anyway at this point hopefully scrafty and skarm can still do some work you know skarm versus stunfisk really isn't that bad because the brave birds really 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 hurt go for a foul play against this venusaur uh right here and bring in my skarm Again, this is, again, the Venusaur Stunfish score. I was very lucky to get my Dedene aligned uh, to that Sableye. However, uh, if it was like a different order, we would have been screwed, right? So, because this line is like two answers to the Dedene. So, not, not great, I feel like, in the current meta. Yeah, again, we have a bit, a bit of lag and this, this I, I would have thrown this Brave Bird one uh, air slash earlier, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, in the end, I guess. I'm just gonna shoot up this rock slide now because I am the buff. This would knock out. And we're gonna go for another Brave Bird, which will do so much damage. Just put him deep into the red. And if you notice, my switch timer is also almost up. So I'm gonna switch out, counter down to Scrafty. At this point, it's a Venusaur versus my Scrafty and Skarm. So I'm looking pretty good because I'm still out of range for a single Frenzy to kill my Skarm. And my Scrafty can still do a good amount of damage with the foul play as well. Yeah, they're gonna throw the frenzy right here, but it is too little, too late. And Skarm will, well, Skarm is low, right? Skarm is low. Maybe if they get to two frenzies somehow, or maybe it's a solar beam Venusaur. That might kill me. A solar beam would probably kill me, but no, this is over. Mandibus versus Scrafty. This is not amazing. I'd love to see Mandibus against my Dedene, so. I'm gonna switch out right here, really hoping they have a Galarian Stunfisk in the back, which is often paired. It's very often paired with Menabuzz, so I'm hoping they bring it out here. However, they end up uh, throwing a couple more moves. I was actually hoping to catch an Aerial Ways on my Skarm, but they were very smart and they held off on throwing. They're bringing a Jellicent right, right here. Makes sense, because Jellicent doesn't have that much play versus Scrafty, uh, so they definitely wanna... Uh, get it out there and use it on my scar much brave bird knowing they won't shield they have good counting and they throw right before i get to my next uh, sky attack this is shadow ball uh, which uh lets me know they don't have bubble beam which is good to know i guess and it also means this is ice beam uh, which maybe i could shield but i'm not gonna because ice beam i think does less than a narrow ways from mandibus and i want to keep my shields for that farm it down in comes Mandibuzz, most likely. I have a lot of energy, but I'm not gonna throw. It's not very worth it on Mandibuzz. Oh, but a Nido Queen comes in, it comes in, and this is the worst thing you can see for the Dene. For this team in particular, actually, you know, Skarmy can handle it, uh, but Scrafty and the Dene just kind of lose. So I'm not in a great spot right here. I'm just gonna pop because I'm definitely expecting them to shield. If they don't shield, that's game over, it's for sure. But yeah, they just poison Fang now. And I'm not looking too good. I'm really not looking too good. I throw another pup, but I need a queen win CMP. And at this point, uh, I really thought I won CMP, to be honest. But I actually lose. I should have really thrown a foul play, since now they have no reason to shield at all. Because their mana bus just gets to an area ways and kills me, right? They have no reason to shield. Since I'm double boosted, I'm going to go for the foul play. It might do a good amount of damage. Uh, it definitely has more than pup, so, but they shield it up. And that's a game over right there. Very, very tough one with the Dene versus Nidoqueen. Kofa Grigas. This is a great lead for a Scrafty Foul Play. Of course, there's a ton of damage versus this thing. And all the moves uh, it can throw at me are resisted. However, my counters are double resisted and their Shadow Claws are only single. So they are adding up. In comes Vigoroth. I throw a couple counters to hopefully get into a range where Play Rough will knock them out. I'm going to shield this. Uh, guys, it might be a bulldoze. They are body slamming though. Makes sense. Makes sense. Gonna play rough right here. And if I think this kills if they let it go, so they're actually gonna shoot this up. Maybe I could have baited. Felt like a little risky though. At this point, I'm also kind of curious to see how much a discharge does though. I'm just gonna take this move, expecting just a body slam. Really curious to see how much it does. Uh, but first, we're gonna have to shoot another body slam before you should have thrown before. However, I want to uh, scare them with the play rough. I'm gonna throw discharge right here. Pretty hoping this kills, but it barely doesn't end up doing it. And I tried to switch. I thought tried to throw on two, but figure out win CMP. I'm not sure if that is correct to be honest, or just or just lag. I'm not 100% sure. 
Uh, but it's fine. I just farm it down with Scrafty. In comes Lucario. <laughs> Which is such a sick pick. But man, I have so many pups stored up. I'm just gonna pop up right here. Another pup coming through. But this will kill the Lucario, I think. But I get to another one. Even though they shield. I get to another one. And this kills the Lucario. And after this, I will go into Skarm. I won't be able to get to the Fowler versus the Coffin. That's why I switched to Skarm immediately. And now I just have to hope they don't get the two Shadow Balls before I get to my move. Uh, Brave Bird might barely knock out. I think it does from here. Let's see. Shadow Ball comes through. There's a lot of damage. Uh, they're not gonna, gonna get to another one though. I get to the, to the Brave Bird. Is this enough to knock out the Coffin? Put the Coffin back into the Coffin. It is. And that's the end of the game right there. GG's. Team number three is definitely the most boring team anyone could make with the Dene. I don't think I have to give much explanation for this. Venusaur Stunfisker is an amazing duo and you slap a third on it. And well, usually it still works. So let's just head into these battles. There were some good ones for sure. Deoxys lead in this first one. End up desyncing here, which gives him like an extra half counter. But it's fine. So I throw immediately. There are seven counters and if I get my Vimeup through, we're... We're even, but instead I'm just going to catch at 10 counters. Most Deoxys throw 10 counters because that's when they're at double Psycho Boost. And I call it correctly. In comes a Vigoroth and I recognize the line right away. If you see Deoxys, you see Vigoroth 9 out of 10 times. It's an Obstagoon in the back. That's quite a common team come to triple a fighting line. I'm fine with this because the Dene kind of destroys that. So that's cool with me. Gonna go for another rock slide right here. But I think they should have thrown their move so they didn't have to shield right here. However, they make I think this is a smart play too by them. Because they're gonna farm me now with Deoxys. And that is kinda tough. They go on Venusaur. Throw the Psycho Boost. I will shield it. This is most likely a Psycho Boost. If it's a rock slide, that's honestly fine with me as well. Because then I'll get to the frenzy before the move. Uh, like easily. So that's fine. Shoot up the Psycho. Uh, go for the frenzy. They're gonna throw another Psycho right here, which I'll let go. Again, I'm expecting the Goon in the back. This is well. Come on, line. Bring in the Dene right away. And there it is. There's the Goon. And the Dene does really, really good here. Just straight play rough. You should be able to win this matchup. Maybe not if they boost, though. Boosting is definitely an issue. <laughs> it's definitely an issue. But not, not enough of an issue. Because you outpace the Goon. Uh, two two player roughs. Well, you get to two player roughs before they get to three night slashes. So if this player rough knocks out, I should still be fine. This boosted counters though are really, really, really adding up. Anyway, go for the player rough. Knocks out the Obstagoon. In comes the Deoxys. We farm it down. Good game. Abuma Snow is so bad for this team. Beats both a Venusaur and the Dene. So I'm just gonna switch to Stunfisk. Hoping to get a shield advantage here. It is a Toxic Croak, so it should be possible. I just no shield this Mud Bomb. I go for the Rock Slide, actually. Because, uh, well, I'm expecting a shield anyway. And going for the Rock Slide here means I can get to another Rock Slide. I force some chip damage. Throw it as late as possible to kind of throw them off. And they actually end up shielding again here. Which is really, really nice for me. Now, I just gotta farm up with my Venusaur. Uh, so I can hopefully get a Sludge Bomb against the Aboma Snow later on. Gonna shoot this up, because it would hurt. I ended up doing not that much farm here. Honestly, I could have farmed way more. Uh, I just kind of lost track of energy at this point. But I could have done like four more Vinyps, I think, at least. Anyway, uh, well, it's not gonna matter. Because it's a freaking Skarmory in the back as well. This is just triple Venusaur answers. No! No, oh, that's pretty bad. That is pretty bad. Let's play rough from here. But this is not a Shadow Bama, so it's not gonna kill. I will no shield this, expecting it's a Weather Ball. I don't wanna get hit by the Energy Ball, because that would definitely knock me out. Uh, so I'm just gonna no shield the Energy Ball, so they're forced to throw more energy. Uh, or no shield the Weather Ball, so they're forced to throw more Weather Balls instead of shielding the Weather Ball and getting hit by, hit by an Energy Ball. Alright. Ooh, ooh, yeah, this was a mistake. I could have thrown one more. They did two air slashes with the Skarmio, right? Which means I should have thrown one extra. Uh, Thunder Shock, because that would have allowed me to get to this Discharge right here. I'm not sure if I would have reached it first at Bomba Snow, though. I just threw immediately, because, well, I wasn't uh, really aware of the amount of energy. We kind of had some stutters there. But either way, even if they would have gone there, I should have overfarmed one, just so I could possibly outpace this Karmory to the Discharge. And I might have been able to win this game. 
very close one though. Another Deoxys lead. Let's see if we can do the exact same play. Switching it then, catching the Psycho Boost is always uh, what I... Well, usually, honestly, I always switch it up. Sometimes I switch at 9, sometimes I switch at 10, sometimes I switch at 11. It just depends on how I'm feeling that day. This opponent though throws at 9, so that's fine. I'm just going to shield this up then. This is definitely a Psycho Boost, and then I'm going to switch after... Well, I was going to switch after two more, but they end up switching, actually. Which is fine for me. Just stay in. It's another vigor off. Is this the same line? Trust me. I didn't tell my my uh, members of Discord to to run uh, or to. I didn't tell uh, the, the the players I'm facing what team they should use. Uh, I just told them run whatever you run normally. All right. They didn't even re well. They probably knew I was running the Dene, uh, but uh, I didn't tell them. I just said just run what you normally run, and it ends up we're gonna face another triple fighting line against this line which is just pretty funny actually pretty uh pretty funny coincidence anyway uh gonna play it out a little little differently this time a little differently this time because this time my venusaur is dead uh oh this is a weird thing that ends up happening i throw a discharge right here but i throw psycho boost this is just shouldn't be a cmp tie but it is <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, we desync CMP there. That doesn't usually happen, but this time it did, and it, it's gonna put, a, put us in a really awkward spot now. Because I would have just farmed down. I would have honestly shielded, farmed down the Deoxys, and we would have been in a very winning po position. Now it's gonna be close. I just throw a discharge here now uh, and let my Dedene go down. In hindsight, though, I could have taken one Night Slash and gotten to the play rough. So that's what I should have done. I just wasn't really aware of the amount of damage able to just yet. Anyway. Bring in the Fisk right here against the Goon. Gonna go for the Rock Slide. I think I only need two Rock Slides. But they end up shooting this here. So at this point, honestly, I might as well just try to go for the Earthquake to get the guaranteed uh, KO. And also, you know, kind of send a message that the uh, Stun Fisk still kind of broken. Even against Triple Fighter. <laughs> it's kind of insane, to be honest. All right, Night Slash coming through. I shoot it up. And I go for the Earthquake right there. If they would have uh, boosted there, I would have definitely just gone for the Rock Slide. Because that, this Night Slash would have knocked out. But since they didn't boost, I can safely go for the Earthquake. or knock out this Goon. And that is a bye-bye right there. Skarmory lead. Really bad. I go into the Stun Fisk. Really bad. This is not good. But we might be able to burn a shield there. Maybe the Dene can sweep what's in the back. Since it's a Vigoroth. Uh, it's a common pairing I've seen with that core is like a obstagon or a scrafty dose i would be able to beat but if it's like a mud boy or a stun fisk yeah we're definitely game over because even shield advantage to dna doesn't do the best look at stun fisk go this is just ridiculous to be honest i'm able to get to an earthquake and a rock slide versus vigoroth even though they bulldozed me pretty insane pretty insane maybe i should have shielded that i think if i shield that i might even be able to win the one shield uh, and get switched back. Maybe I should have considered that. But I was honestly kind of expecting a body slam. Because that's usually the safer way to play out that matchup. Anyway. I'm going to switch instantly here. Because I know it's Skarmory. And they bring out the, the, the Swampert. And at this point. Probably. Probably game over. Though. Let's not uh, write it off just yet. Maybe this player of does uh, a significant more damage. Sig significant amount of more damage than I was expecting. Anyway. Clear off. Doesn't hurt. Well, not if they shield. Alright, let's try again. We shield up this next Hydro. Hopefully I get, can get to another player. Of, I really want to see how much this does now. Please kill. Come on, Dedene. Do it for me. Change into a Grass type. Real quick. Come on. Do it. Do it. Oh, it didn't kill, but that's so much damage. That's so much damage. That's really, really nice. Imagine if I could have gotten like a couple of Vimips in here. We would just died. That's pretty cool. All right, anyway, this is game over though. Skarm, I can't do anything against Skarm with Venusaur. So this is over. And it's also the final game of the day. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you, this gave you some more insight into Day Dene. I hope uh, you got some good ideas for a team uh, from me as well. Anyway, some closing thoughts. The Dene will be really good in limited metas. But in the current open meta... I am not convinced of it because there's some very common cores, especially Venusaur Stunfisk, but also Mud Boys uh, that you see often uh, that just destroy it. So probably a very risky pick in the current meta. Anyway, see you again in the next video. Good luck with your battles.